Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rob, and here on the channel, we've made a lot of videos about the value-oriented AV receivers that have been available at Costco. And recently, it looks like Onkyo just released another one of their Costco-exclusive models for 2023, the TX-SR393, which is what we'll be talking about in this video today. Although we've been really impressed by the models we've tested from Costco in the past for their priced performance, we've also gotten quite a few comments on these videos from people who feel the units are just a little too expensive. And for a lot of folks that may be trying to decide between a dedicated setup and a soundbar, we can definitely understand this view. And that's why we have high hopes for this model in particular, since it'll be the most affordable receiver we reviewed on this channel, coming in at just $280. And for that price, it promises a lot of impressive features that are usually reserved for more expensive units like full Dolby Atmos and DTSX support. But with that said, there is more to the story, so let's go ahead and get started by opening up the box. Everything here is pretty basic. You get a remote control, a pair of batteries, your setup microphone, AM FM antennas, as well as the rest of your documentation. And of course, under all that, the only thing left is the receiver itself. The SR393 is a pretty basic unit, which you'd expect from a receiver at this price point. On the back, you'll find a set of HDMI 2.0 inputs, and these can handle all HDCP 2.2 content, along with a single HDMI output with ARC support. Now, this was a little confusing to us because Costco's website noted that the receiver supported eARC, but neither Onkyo's website or the receiver itself seemed to mention anything about it. In the end, we found that this port only supports regular HDMI ARC, but we'll talk about that more when we get into the testing of this unit. Another nice addition here is the 5 volt USB port, which can come in handy if you need additional power for something like a fiber optic cable, but in most cases, that won't be necessary. Below that, we also have coaxial and optical audio inputs, AM and FM antenna inputs for using the built-in radio tuner, and line level RCA inputs. Right next to those are the line outs for two subwoofers, which both output the same signal. And there are also outputs for zone B if you want to extend playback to another room by using a separate amplifier. And of course, we have the speaker connections for hooking up a five channel surround system. The SR393 has two pairs of binding posts for your left and right channels, as well as three pairs of these smaller spring clip connectors for your surround channels. This is definitely a bit of a cost saving measure, but for the price of this unit, it's about what we'd expect. And just in case you were wondering, this receiver weighs in at 18 pounds or about eight kilos. Taking a look at the front of the receiver, you get a pretty decent interface with a clean design. The whole front panel is made out of plastic with a brushed aluminum texture that actually looks pretty good. We also appreciate that this receiver has a row of dedicated input buttons, which is not the case with most other receivers that have gone to a menu-based interface for changing inputs. In my opinion, the dedicated input buttons are much more convenient. On the front, you'll also find a port for the setup microphone, tone controls, and a big shiny volume knob, which is also made from plastic, but it gets the job done. Overall, I feel like this receiver has a simple, understated appearance that should fit into most spaces. And I like how similar it is to Onkyo's other offerings. In addition to the receiver itself, I should also briefly mention the remote control. It appears to be a standard black, all plastic remote, but it actually feels quite nice in the hand and it has all the basic buttons that you would need to control everything on the receiver. I don't have any big complaints here, but if you're putting together a full system, you may want to consider adding a universal remote into your setup. As far as the numbers go, this receiver promises 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms at 0.08% total harmonic distortion with two channels driven. And that's measured using FTC standards, which is honestly more than we expected to see from an inexpensive unit. Now, whether or not that translates into real world performance with five channels hooked up is a different matter entirely, but this isn't a bad start. It also claims to be able to support a four ohm load, but that's something we'll need to put to the test once we get it hooked up. I think one of the more interesting things about this receiver is the channel configuration. While it's pretty much just a normal 5.2 channel receiver, you can actually remap the rear channels to Dolby Atmos height channels and get a 3.2.2 Dolby Atmos configuration. Now granted, this is a pretty uncommon setup, but if you do want a really basic true Dolby Atmos system with real height channels, this receiver can provide that. 
Now, obviously you're not gonna get anything like IMAX Enhance or DTSX Pro at this price point, but to be fair, there aren't any manufacturers that offer these features in a receiver this affordable. Although I do think it would have been really nice to see features like HDMI 2.1 pass-through and everything that comes along with that, like VRR, at this price point, we can excuse most of that. As usual, we tested this receiver with movies and music to see what the unit was capable of. But before we started testing, we had to set up the receiver. And as far as the menus go, it's about what you would expect for a receiver like this. It's functional, but it doesn't offer many settings, like graphical EQ, for example. Onkyo does include a microphone to be used with their AccuEQ room correction software, but as usual, we set it up manually to see how it would perform without room correction. And as we mentioned in other videos, with these low-end receivers, we've never really been impressed with the included calibration tools anyway. As far as sound quality goes, this receiver performed about as we expected it to. For a $280 receiver, it sounded decent, and considering the challenging load it was presented with by our 4-ohm NHT speakers, I really had no complaints about the sound quality. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that if you don't spend more money, you won't get better sound. We never even came close to reference levels because we felt the receiver started running out of headroom long before that point. And of course, this is going to be dependent on the type and efficiency of your speakers. And before we go any further, I should mention that with such an entry-level receiver, you really need to curb your expectations. Don't think that this is going to compete with receivers that cost even twice as much as this one does. At this price point, you're settling for the best set of compromises that will fit your system rather than the features that will improve it. So in conclusion, if you've been thinking about getting into a home theater, but you just don't want to spend a ton of money to see if it's something you're even going to enjoy, then I think this receiver for $280 is a great way to test the waters. It gives you the basic fundamentals you need to get into a pretty nice sounding 5.1 setup without the extra added cost of features that you may not need right now. And if you find that it is something that you really enjoy, you've only invested $280, so if you decide to upgrade later, it's not that much of a loss, and you can always repurpose it into a different room or another system. One more point I want to make is that if you buy this from Costco, you can try it out, and if it ends up not being what you expected, you can return it within 3 months or 90 days for a full refund. We're not affiliated with Costco in any way. We bought this receiver with our own money, and we're pretty happy with the experience it provided us. We'll be sure to leave a link to Costco's page for this receiver down in the description in case you're interested in picking one up for yourself. And I hope this video might have been helpful in deciding on a receiver for your home theater setup. Let us know if you have any questions about this receiver down in the comment section below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.